Hi, I'm Brian, Service Manager at Whole Latte Love, and today we're going to review a few of the different steam and hot water taps you may find on your machines. We got a really cool cutaway machine here. I always like that. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. So, uh, first we're going to start by going over just a couple of the different things that I have laid out in front of us here. Uh, I've got a few options for styles. So you can see, got this one, just not cut open. Mm -hmm. uh, this is on the Technica. Uh, this design ECM machine, ECM, mm -hmm. the ECM Technica. Uh, this is the same style. It's a little bit different of a design than what you see on the uh, Synchronica, but mm -hmm. it, internally it's the same. It's just the outside is built a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, down here I have an Expo Bar valve, a Creme valve. These two are basically like this and the Synchronica. They're the same internally, just a little bit different in design. And then we have. This one, which is off of a 500, 600, 700 Profitech. Profitech. So okay. those are a couple of different things we got going on here. So obviously you see we've got the joystick design and then we have these three that are a knob design. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll start off with talking about the one that everyone wants to talk about, the cutaway. Oh yeah, Let's, how does this puppy work? All right, so. It's actually pretty simple. It operates very similarly to how the valves inside your uh, group head actually work. Mm -hmm. um, so you move something, it pushes up on a valve down there, mm -hmm. and everything kind of moves. So it's just a piston. When you push down on the joystick here, it moves a cam, which pushes this whole assembly back. Now this is the main one that we're worried about. This is what is opening up the flow of steam. So this actuator down here is very similar to the one that's at the very bottom of your E61 group head. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's a little tricky to see what's going on in there, so I've, that's why I've got this one with the back end actually already removed. So this is that piston right there, or actuator. So what's going on is when everything is pushed forward, Oops, let me the go backwards around, here. Right? <laughs> it's a real thing. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so pushes back on it, and you'll see you have a seal right there. And that mm -hmm. seal is going up against that opening. So line it up. Now you see what it looks like inside there. Okay. So you have the spring giving it resistance to keep it seated and uh, when you're not using it. So when you're using it, it pushes everything back and is fighting against that spring. Mm -hmm. So then when you pop it back, everything just pops back into place. So I call these like sprung valves because it's the spring that's creating the tension to close it, not you cranking down on something. Exactly, yep. Uh, so that is the, spr the sprung valve. Um, that's similar to what you would see inside the Profitech valves here. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit different of a setup. You still got the spring inside there, and you have a seal that goes up against that opening in there. Mm -hmm. um, the way that this one works is there's usually, behind the uh, handle here, there's a little clip that goes on here that holds this whole assembly together. Mm -hmm. So as you turn the knob, it's actually bringing that that way. Right. So then when you close it, the spring is helping push it shut. So it's the spring doing it, again, not you cranking, but yep. a little different than some of the other valves we have, right? Yes. Um, one thing I will no uh, mention on here is with this seal, uh, because it is a nice soft rubber seal, mm -hmm. you don't need to crank down on it really, really hard. Uh, the only thing you're going to do if you crank on it really hard is you're going to start leaving a bigger divot in there, which yeah. can start to shorten the life of that. Yeah. Not a service video, but I had to say that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I should mention we do have, you know, how, if you are having leaks, we do have at, at our sports section a whole lot they love. We do have a lot of videos showing you how to like take care of that, rebuild some of these valves, and yep. more coming all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We've got at least everything for the, uh, the the different sprung levers right now as well as the expo bar so sure. definitely go check it out if you're this intrigues you and you want to rip it apart check it out <laughs> yeah um so like i said this is off of a expo bar uh this is a little bit different there's no spring inside there 
Uh, what happens is, I'll show you, like I said, they're the same between the two of these. You have a retaining cap right here, which makes it so that you can only open it up so far. Mm -hmm. um, but then you loosen that off, and then the whole thing can actually slide like right out like this. Mm -hmm. um, so inside there, you'll see, just like up on here, you have these seals. Uh, there's going to be seals towards the forward lowers. end of the valves to make sure that you don't have water coming out from the front of your machine. Sure. Uh, so if you ever have a leak coming from up here, it's going to be those O-rings or these O-rings if you're working on this design. one. Yep. Uh, so the Expo Bar is also a little bit different in that you have this Teflon plug instead of a rubber seal. Uh, these ones you do have to put a little bit more oomph into to get them to seal. Um, but the other end of that is they tend to last a lot longer because they don't start to dry out and crack as soon as something this rubber or silicone would. So, okay. so that's what you're going to find inside the Expo Bar. And like I said, with the Creme, again, the outside is basically a, just a redesign, but the inside is a little bit different. It's a little bit shorter mm -hmm. on here, but the design is the same. You got your two O-rings, you get a thread, and then you have your Teflon plug. Mm -hmm. The seal's up in the back there. Okay. So. Okay. Now, um, also, just real quick while we're here, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but no burn wands. Since we've got the cutaway here, we can kind of see how that works on at least this setup, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've got another example of a wand right here, too, because there's a couple different styles that you'll see. Sure. Um, uh, with what we carry here, they're the Teflon tubes that run through here. Uh, they're coming out with all sorts of crazy things these days. They got uh, vacuum sealed uh, metal tubes that run through them now, which are okay. pretty pretty sick. Um, but for what we have, you've got this tube that runs through. So what happens is the steam, instead of running through this tube itself and getting all hot, it's mm -hmm. just running through the Teflon. That way this doesn't get all hot and you don't burn your little digits. Uh, so if you look at how this I'll comes and there. meets up right here, so that plugs over, there's like a little metal nipple in there that slides over it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an older design. Most machines have switched to using uh, inserted where there's an O-ring in there. That red right there. Yep, right? that red O-ring right in there. That's what creates the seal inside here and keeps the steam inside this tube and not heating up that tube. Uh, you have that O-ring both on the tip side and on the ball side. And so, since that tube's a little insulated, I mean, are you gonna get maybe a little less condensation than you would if you didn't have that, you know? so. A yeah. little drier steam? A little bit drier steam, yeah. So. Um, but yeah, so if you ever notice that, you know, this wand seems to be getting a lot hotter than it used to be, uh, it's probably if you're If you're one on. of them folks that likes to pull the tip off <laughs> to do a real good cleaning job, it's possible that what happened is you pulled this tube down a little bit further and it came unseated from up top. Mm -hmm. Or when you put it back on, it didn't get seated in there. I like to try and keep if it pulls down like this, keep it down as much as I can and then push it up hard. Mm -hmm. Better chance of actually resealing it up there. So, but yeah, that's all cool. there is to it. It's a pretty basic design, but saves your hands a lot. So, <laughs> cool. Gotta love it. Now, um, we've got another machine over here. Do we want to take a quick look at yep. how the valve in this one? Yeah, we got the Quick Mill Pipa. So, this is a different style. Uh, I didn't pull this one off, but it's very similar to what you would see in both the ProfTech and the Creme Expo Bar versions, uh, mm -hmm. where it's just a piston that you're pulling out mm -hmm. with the handle. Um, so there's different styles of valves across all these machines. Uh, for the most part, they're usually pretty similar, uh, but you will run into things like uh, steal uh, some of Teddy's time now. Mm -hmm. Usually he's the classic guy, but I will mention on the Gaja Classic and Classic Pro, the steam valve on there is not rebuildable. So if that starts to go bad, he's got to replace it. Mm -hmm. But it's a pretty simple design. It's just a, uh, it's just a needle valve. So mm -hmm. those should last a good long while as long as you don't get any scale build up in there. Okay. Um, so that is something you can run into. And like I said, this is kind of a uh, generic. We're not 
touching anybody specific right here. So right. uh, I just wanted to mention that you will run into some machines where you can't actually service the valve. Okay. All right, Brian, thanks so much for taking us through the general overview of valves on these machines. Yeah, not a problem.